think we're ready. Okay, I think we're here with our group three authors. So excited to be with here with you again for one more week of Meet Your New Clean Romance Crush. This is the last group, but certainly not the least. We're here with amazing clean romance authors, Christian romance authors, beach romance authors, rom-com authors. There is something for every single one of you here. If you are here with us tonight, Remember, we're drawing three $20 gift cards to your choice of Amazon, iTunes, Kobo, or Nook, and we're going to do that from comments. Now, lest you think we can't see the comments, we totally can. So they come up on our side. We can see them. A lot of times, these ones are all from YouTube. I can tell because they have a little YouTube uh, symbol on them. There's a couple of YouTube channels uh, connected tonight, so we're super excited for that. But we can see you. We might not be able to put your comments up all night long because it kind of covers up some of our people and um, our bottom row people. We don't want them to just be like covered up. But we always like to start out with super easy. Tell us where you're joining us from because it's a Tuesday night at what 9 p.m. Eastern. I mean, it's only seven o'clock where I live, so it's not too bad and whatnot. But we always want to see where our people are coming from. And I like seeing some of our repeat people. I know Katie was here last week. Let's see, who else do you see? Sue was here. I don't know if she was here last week, but I know she was the first week. So we see Texas. Now Texas is, you know, oh, I clicked the wrong one. We've got people, authors in Texas with us this week. I mean, Bridget is here and she's from Texas, so she's always here. But uh, always fun to see where you're coming from. And we are going to get to introducing ourselves here in just a second so you can hear where we're from as well. Feel free to throw comments in. We might not have any time for questions. It's more of a meet and greet so you can get to know us, get to know new authors that you haven't heard of. And of course, you've all got our books already. And so we're going to be talking about those and doing some other fun things a little bit later as we go through. I'm Elena Johnson. I usually throw things over to Bridget. She's kind of our MC, and then I kind of lurk in the background and do a lot of our technical things. And then so, our other eight authors here tonight are our featured authors, and we're super excited to have all of them here with us tonight. So gift card, I did that. I'm going to come back to the scavenger hunt, so I'm not going to forget about that. But we've got people from Oregon, and of course, Denise is from Utah, and I know her. She's come to my house. It wasn't scary. I was a little scared at the first, but I wasn't after I met her. I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to die. It's okay. I can people. <laughs> We're super excited to have all of you here with us, and I'm going to throw it to Bridget, who's going to kind of lead us off from there. Yep. So, um all the viewers may not know this, but I, I would say that the majority of authors that I've met are actually introverts. They don't love to talk. They don't love peopling and getting in big groups and chatting. Some of them do. There are a few, but not, not a ton. So I often get thrown up in uh, writing conferences and stuff as a shield, but I could talk <laughs> the ear off a mule, as the saying goes. And I have seven horses, so I could pretty much talk the ear off a horse for sure. Um, so I will just say that tonight, what we're going to do, because there are a lot of us, so we have a lot of amazing people here. I would say we might have saved the best for last because we have some powerhouses. Um, I'm really excited to hear more from them. And um, and so what we'll do is we'll start with Elena, who I'm going to pitch it right back to. I'm almost always on the bottom. I'm not sure how it happened today. Usually I have to log out and log back in or something. So today I'm in the middle, which is going to be weird. But we'll start with Elena and we'll have her answer this question I'm going to pose to everybody first. And then we'll do Susan, Tess, Ciara, 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 sorry. Um, and then me, April, Jan, Lacey, Judy, and then Emma. And so then we'll roll back around for the next question after that. So we'll just kind of go in order that that's how I see it on the screen. I think everyone sees it the same way. You guys want to nod and tell me I'm not crazy. Okay, good. Not um, crazy. So, You're not crazy. <laughs> so here's our first question. And this is kind of based um, a little bit on the questions we often get from people when we're doing these. But I think you guys have probably heard some of us talk before about our books. You've probably heard us talk about our writing. We do posts about them on social media. So what we're going to start off with tonight is a little bit that you may not know as much about. I'm kind of an open book, uh, but not everyone is. So we're going to tell you a little bit about what we do when we're not writing. Hobbies, anything we want to share about our family or where we live. Um, and then I, we're all going to tell you a little bit about um, what, 
like if we have more than one pen name, because I can already tell you a big secret about Elena Johnson. She has three and Such she's a written secret. a bunch of books. Oh, so we'll let you no, tell no. <laughs> that. I know. So she's going to tell you guys about that. And then we're also going to try and remember to answer if our books are out in audio, ebook, paperback, what formats you can find them in and where they might be. So if you are a KU author, this would be the time to tell people. Or if you're wide and your books are all over the place, mention that. So, Elena, why don't we start with you and you'll you'll be able to kick it off for everybody else. I always forget one, at least one of the things, which is totally fine. But I'm Elena Johnson. That's how you say my name. It's one of those super weird names that my mom thought she was making easy, which really would have been a lot easier if she put a Y or an I in it. But she didn't. So it's Elena um, I also write as Liz Isaacson. I write Christian cowboy romance as her. And I write romantic women's fiction as Jesse Newton. And Elena writes clean beach romance that's either on the beach or adjacent to the beach. When I'm not writing, I'm generally doing puzzles or taking my dogs to the park, which my big dog, he's 60 pounds. He's a retriever. And he's been on cage rest for two weeks. So that has been a super fun time at the Johnson household. Poor and Winston. He gets up in my face every night with a toy. He's like, don't you want to play with me? I'm like, I actually really do, but you need to lay down. But I took him to the park yesterday and he didn't limp. So we think his paw might have healed up enough that he can like be a dog again. So I'm a dog mom because I'm an empty nester. Both my kids are adults and have moved out and are doing their adulting thing for the most part. Um, I'm pretty sure either of them or both of them call me every single day, which is fine. It's, it's fine. Um, it's just, you think you're alone and you're really not. They yeah, but and Elena is my, Elena is my role model for that. She's handled it so beautifully. I feel like I'd be crying every day and she's like, no, it's okay because they need to move along. I'm like, I know they need to move along. Mine leave soon. <laughs> they do. They do need to move along. It's so good for them. Um, my books, so I'm generally doing puzzles, attending to the dogs, taking calls from my kids, or watching copious amounts of Netflix or and or Hulu and or Prime Video and or Max. We have them all. Um, I love watching TV and movies while I write, so I do some of that even when I'm not writing. Uh, my books are widely available under a lot of my names. I have about 30 series of books. Only five of them are in KU right now, so they're on all retailers all uh, platforms, libraries. I have about 140 audiobooks, and all my books are also in print. So you can find me pretty much anywhere you like to read books. So that is me. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of move through the order from here. All right. Well, Elena, you always blow my mind. I can't hardly believe how much you have accomplished. It's just it's like, whoa. So I am super glad to be here. It's going to be a great night, you guys. I haven't met a lot of these authors face to face, so this is super fun for me. I'm Susie Mae Warren, um, and I, let's see, about me, I actually am not in my office right now. I'm noticing everybody else has really cute offices, and I do not. Actually, I do, but it's in Minnesota. I'm in our Florida house right now, and I share an office with my husband, and he's in a meeting right now, and he kicked me out. So I'm like homeless tonight in, my, in, the, in the great room, but that's okay. I, I do really like everybody's cute office though and I do wish you could see mine but oh well that's all right I um so yes we about me I uh love to write and I love to write about the things that I do and so I have to admit I have a very fun life I do a lot of adventurous stuff I scuba dive and I ski and I have skydived and I have I just do all the things that I do in my novels because I like to research I guess and I like to do those things um I uh have four children they are all grown and out of the house and you guys i'm telling you it's going you're going to love it you are going to love it you get used to it and then they're going to do their own thing and then they're going to swing by and they're going to go mom i really miss you and they're going to sit down and talk to you like adults and it's fantastic and then you're going to start having grandkids and it rocks i'm telling you i have three i just had a, another one and oh they just the grandkids are the bomb i'm telling you they're so much fun because you can like play with them and then give them back and they're just awesome. So that's great. Um, let's see. I have been writing for about 22 years. Um, I have about 100 books out. And so in that time, Elena's written like 100 books in two years. I've written about 100 books in 22 years. So, but that's okay. Some of us are just a little slower. It's all right. Um, but half my books are, are indie. The rest are traditional. And um, almost all my books are in audio. So that's great. I am on mostly, well, 
most of my trad books are wide, but a lot of my indie books are recently KU, and I kind of move them in and out as I go. Um, let's see, what else was I supposed to talk about? Um, oh, I have no pen name. I'm just Susan May Warren. That's that's all there is. So, and I just and I write in like five different genres. So I probably should have a pen name, but I'm not quite that creative and smart. So I'm just going to stay with the one and just write epic romantic adventure, and that's where I'm going to stay. So thanks for being here and um, turning it to Tess. Perfect. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I couldn't find the unmute button. Uh, I'm Tess Thompson, and I'm coming to you from a suburb in Seattle called Woodenville. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but it's the one of the wine places of the world. We have all kinds of wonderful wine here, and that's one of our, uh, unfortunately, that's one of Cliff and my husband, and we love wine. We're members of like 12 clubs or something. So if you ever come to visit me and you like wine, we'll go wine tasting. Um, I have four kids. I have two bonus sons who are off being adults and two daughters who are 21 and almost 18. So my one daughter's at college uh, junior year and she's doing awesome. She just won a huge um, internship for the summer at one of the best chemistry programs in the country. So I'm just so proud of her. She's super She's like a smarty. I don't know where she got it. But and then my other daughter is leaving for college in the fall. And that's going to be it's going to be hard. But I do know, having already gone through it, that they do come back a lot and they do call a lot. So that, that's good. <laughs> um, and I'm like Elena. I like to do puzzles and I love to watch television shows and I love to read all of these wonderful ladies books that are in front of us tonight. And uh, we just moved into a new house last year and we're finally kind of settled in. It's It took us like nine months to get a new table. It's like all these things. But um, and we have three cats. I lost my darling mittens that I wrote with every single day for 10 years um, right before Christmas. But we got two naughty kittens and they're amazing and we love them. So and then we have Midnight, who's been with us for 10 years. And she's kind of like the the mom, the, the disgruntled mother of like, who brought these kids home? But <laughs> anyway, and I write uh, historical uh, romance, American historical romance, usually kind of turn of the century, 1910s um, and small town clean romance. Uh, and my kind of my thing is f family sagas. So I have like, you know, a family of five and everybody gets a story. So that's, and that's what I like to write. So and that's she didn't mention this, but she names a lot of her series names after family members, which I think is so cute. <laughs> yeah. I have Ella Point for my daughter, Ella and Emerson Pass for my daughter, Emerson. Cliff Side Bay is for Cliff. And I've got uh, one plan for my stepson, Jeremy Cove. That's coming later this year. So He's, I just love that. Students. I think it's so cute. I didn't tell my kids because there'd probably be some kind of rebellion, but it's such a cute idea. I can just see a coup on Bridget's farm and I called it a farm. You're going to have to explain it. it on Bridget's farm, she was like, her kids are picketing out there for their own series name. No, it's already a big problem because, you know, there's that like dedicated to before I knew how many books I was going to put out. I was like trying to carefully farm like, Whitney, which is my husband, got one and the kids each got one. And now they're like, so and so is this many and this. I'm like, I can't keep it straight. I guarantee you if I did a series title, I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Knight and um, I have three almost grown children. I'm almost an empty nester. I have one that is in at UGA who used to call me all the time until he found a serious girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And now I don't see him anymore. And then my youngest is going to graduate high school this year and go off to college. So I'll be an empty nester and, but that's okay. Uh, Susan May Warren and I, I think we're related. We just didn't know it. Um, love skydiving, rock climbing, uh, adventuring anywhere I can. Um, we, our plan is in a year to sell everything and get on a sailboat and sail around the world, my husband and I. So uh, you do? <laughs> yes, this is his big dream. This is his dream. And he's like, you can have internet on the boat. You can still write. You can do Starlink or whatever. Boats are my worst nightmare. Why do we like boats? Like, oh, we he, 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 he dreams of this. So you're going to do it. You're going to sell everything. Yeah. Oh, I keep like holding on. So, okay, Kira, Sierra, we're going to have to, we're going to have to have a chatty chat. Yeah, we definitely do. And it's funny you say Kira because my legal name's Tamara. So my husband teases me all the time that we, my first agent assigned my pen name back like 15 years ago and was like, Sierra Knight, long story, I won't tell you why. 
But he walks around calling me Kinera Knigget because everybody makes fun because they could never say Tamara. And now he's like, you couldn't choose a pen name that people can say. So, yeah. So anyway, that's my um, lot in life. My husband likes I just have to put this up because we are going to need a bigger boat. I think I might be able to do a big boat, a little boat. I'm like, why is the floor moving? I'm going to go over. It's so, like an no, awesome no, it'll be a big boat. Trip. It'll be like a catamaran with lots of rooms and like, it'll be stable and we'll have our, we'll do our live from there. That'll be fun. Look up. I, call, I say writer's five. retreat, writer's retreat on the boat. There you go. Uh, look up leopard 45. That's probably one of our favorite cruising cats. HH 44. They just released the OC on that one. Anyway, I digress. Um, we also have a beautiful white lab and we had two cats, lost one. Um, unfortunately, the lab won't be able to go on the boat with us. So we have to rehome her. So I'm, don't make me cry. But anyway, uh, I write Southern Grace to Western Embrace, um, contemporary small town and historical Westerns. Everything's sweet. Some of it's Christian. And um, I have two series that are in audio, Sweetwater County, which is my longest running series and probably what I'm most known for, and Sugar Maple. Um, I've written over 60 plus books since I started writing and publishing, and I'm hybrid traditionally, whatever. Um, and yeah, so that's basically me. Perfect. So um, I think the first time I met Sierra was a couple of years ago. And she told me, I said, is it Sierra? And she said, no, it's Sierra. And I have never been able to, every time I say, Sierra, no, it's Sierra. Like it always occurs to me in the same order in which it was imprinted in my brain. I have a strange brain like that, but. Um, it is not Kiera Knigget though, okay? That one I have <laughs> not the heard. There. And I may it may imprint later, but so far I have not been <laughs> stuck on that. Um, so the reason Elena said that I have a farm is that I have um, seven horses, uh, three dogs, one of whom occasionally has litters of puppies, three cats, 31 chickens, and I don't know, about a billion fish because my teenager is like obsessed. And apparently when you get a fish, that just makes you want to get more fish and like a bigger tank and then more fish. And I'm like, this is the thing that you do is you just keep getting more fish. I had to put my foot down. It didn't make me popular at home. Um, so it's like chickens. It's, it's, it's like it's, chickens. It's even worse than chickens because oh, you go lock them down right away. They're all over. I went in his room and I'm like, how many tanks do we have? Two. Get rid of all the others. But anyway, uh, and he's like, mom, you don't support the things I want to do. I'm like, Ah, apparently only two fish tanks is not supportive. So, um, but anyway, and, and my kids have started sending me messages about how des devastated they are that we don't have bunnies. And I'm like, guys, 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 I mean, come on. Anyway, so we live in Houston, uh, outside of Houston. I'm actually about 25 minutes away from Emma. And sometimes she'll come over and rollerblade. Um, I managed to break my back in December. But before that, I had worked out almost, I work out like five days a week or something. I either lift weights or do kickboxing or go rollerblading. And Emma comes in rollerblades with me sometimes when she has time. She and I both have five kids. So she's not scared away by the utter chaos, which is my house. Um, and uh, and we ride horses pretty much constantly, as you might imagine, around here. And um, I have two name. They're both my name pretty much, but I do divide my books because um, I find that a lot of people want my, I call it my contemporary stuff, but it's either romancy women's fiction or women's fictiony romance, right? So I write, it's all clean. And no matter what name you pick, my stuff is clean, but that stuff is under B.E. Baker. And um, because when I first decided to put my first book out, there was a Bridget Baker who had a book of haikus, I decided to do Bridget E. Baker so that no one would confuse us. That was probably kind of dumb, but that's how I ended up as Bridget E. Baker. So you have to put that E in there. You'll get the haikus. Um, but anyway, the Bridget E. Baker stuff is sort of my catch-all name. And it's like end of the world, but it's mostly weird fantasy books like horse shifters and dragon shifters and uh, superhumans that are secretly running the world. And Egyptian mythology based portal fantasy. It's not, I mean, it's strange. If you like weird stuff, then then you could check out the Bridget E. Baker stuff. And all but I have 44 books out, and all but one of them is an audio. And that one got bought by a traditional publisher, and then they didn't put out the fourth book. Yay. So I can't put that one out, which is where I'm sort of stuck. They put out the first three. Um, they have an option. I think at some point maybe that option will expire, but so far that's the only one that's not an audio. 
my stuff is available everywhere. None of it's in KU, but you can get it in libraries. Um, you can get it on Kobo Plus. Um, so I think I, I'm like, did I cover all the bases? I'm the one who assigned them. I think I did. So I think that means that we are now to the lovely April who I met for the first time, like maybe two years ago at Nink, I think, but I just saw you not that long ago in October or something, I think. Yeah, that's right. When you came to Atlanta. Yeah. So I'm April and um, I live in Georgia, but I'm, I'm a Southern girl through and through. I was raised in Alabama. And so when I'm not writing, I'm probably doing something related to sports. If you know anything about the South, you know how much we love our sports. So especially college. And um, I've just had my heart broken in the sweet, uh, not the sweet 16, but in the, because we didn't make it that far. I'm an, uh, an Auburn girl. And so Sierra's telling us that she's going to sail around the world when she retires, or at least whenever she gets her kids gone. So we're going to move to Auburn, Alabama, and I'm going to have season tickets for football, basketball, and baseball. And my husband may or may not come with me. But so, so you're going to be like, you have you seen that one where he's a super Boston Red Sox fan? It's, it's, um, he has a late night show. Who is it? Jimmy it's Kimmel? Jimmy, is it Jimmy? No, it's Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Jimmy, that other Jimmy. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Fallon, yeah. And he's like screaming and Drew Barrymore's in there. I just watched that a few weeks ago. <laughs> I'm like, that's going to be April with Auburn. Her <laughs> face is going to be painted. She's going to be out there doing it. <laughs> Except it'll be orange and blue and red yeah. socks are not my favorite team. So, but you know, otherwise then yeah, you nailed it. So um, the other thing that I'm trying to do is I want to learn to paint. So. I think I have a creative side that's writing, obviously, because I've been doing that for a few years. But my mom was really, really artistic. And she painted as long as I can remember. And so I tried. She tried to teach me, and I just didn't get it. So I guess it was just a few months ago I decided to buy a course because I figured, okay, so if I'm not inherently creative, then maybe I can learn. And I think I sold myself a bill of goods because if I, I almost brought the, the first one I did to show you and then I forgot it and left it in the other room. It looks like a six year old did it. So um, I have a long way to go. But in the meantime, I guess I'll just keep writing. So um, I have about 12 series out. I've been publishing since 2019, but writing for a lot longer than that. And it's a total of about, I think I counted 63 books. So anyway, I have kind of put a few books out. And um, I'd like to say that I have a lot of audio, but I have four audio books. One series, which is The Brothers of Duncan Ranch. If you wanted to, to listen to audio um, that, I've, that I've written, then that's the one to get because that's the only one there is. So... Anyway, that's all about me. Thanks, April. I'm Jan Moran, and I am coming to you from my car. It's a lovely uh, office, Jan. <laughs> well, that. Tess, Tess, you take the cake for the most gorgeous windows. My window, well, it leaves a little bit to be desired, but I tried to get a palm tree in the background, so I don't know if you can see that, but uh, anyway, yes, I'm in San Diego, North San Diego County, and I'm originally from Texas. That's the accent that you are probably hearing from Austin. And I just I just love it out here. And I, I set a lot of my books on the coast here in Southern California. And I was on my way to pick up my granddaughter. And of course I hit a lot of traffic. So I didn't quite make it. I'm in Temecula right now near the wine country. So if things get bad, you know, I can always grab a bottle and, <laughs> you know. but uh, I just love it out here. So uh, most of my books are set on the beach in a fictional area called Summer Beach or Crown Island. Uh, again, sort of loosely based on some of the, the places here in Southern California that I know and love. I also write historical fiction. Oh, and my beach books, those are typically clean women's fiction. And uh, family sagas, always a family at the middle of it. And my Summer Beach series, um, 
my protagonists are a little bit older. They're in their 40s, mid 40s. And I love to write grandmas. I love to write smart, sassy grandmas uh, like me. <laughs> and uh, so I've got one series in my Coral Cottage, uh, one grandmother who is a former uh, code breaker, Cold War code breaker. So she's she's pretty smart and sassy, a PhD in mathematics and all that, and a real globetrotter, which I am too. Uh, if I'm not home riding, I'm usually trying to travel somewhere. So in the last year, I've been to South America, Scotland, England, Wales, Spain. Um, I just, I love to travel. So you'll also find that in a lot of my historical sagas. That's where I start. Started. So I started with the perfumer, uh, known as Scent of Triumph back then. It was a World War II saga for St. Martin's Press. And then I went on to write what I call my sensory trilogy, which is my perfumer, my winemakers, and the chocolatier. And then wrapping it up with Hepburn's necklace, uh, which is set in Italy. So I have a lot of overseas, um, Italy, France, locations, South America as well in those. Um, what do I do for fun? I'm often playing with my grandmother, uh, my grandmother, my granddaughter. Uh, and I'm on my way to get her right now. She's 11 and she's taller than I am. Aww. So we're going to have a lot of fun for spring break. We're going to be swimming and going to the park and uh, probably some shopping. She's reached that age now and just um, having fun. So I've written about 30 books. Uh, they're in paperback, hardcover, large print, and all of them are in audio. Uh, I'm, gosh, I have a long way to go to catch up with some of you, but uh, I'm, I'm writing as fast as I can. So that's it for me, Lacey. Well, your one, turn. One thing Jen oh. never says about herself. The I was reason gonna say this. So I was going to say it. You say it. I was like, Jan, here well, we go. Well, the reason she does Please. such a great job writing smart women is you are looking at a Harvard lady. Maybe that's not what Elena was going to say, but I, I say she graduated from Harvard. Yeah, this is a Harvard lady right here. And she writes smart women because you're looking at a brilliant woman who had like come up with a bunch of business, like all these successful businesses she hadn't sold off before she even started writing. She is one of my favorite people to chat with at a conference. I'm always like, hey, uh, Jan, tell me more good things. Uh, I love the business side of things too. I went through the MBA program at Harvard. So when I write about women who are uh, in midlife, starting over, recreating themselves, they're usually starting some kind of a business, whether it's at the farmer's market or, uh, you know, that can grow a long way. In fact, Marina started at the farmer's market. And now she's got a fleet of food trucks. So that's in Coral Cottage. So yeah, I take, I take them along for the ride. I love that. Lacey? All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lacey Williams. Um, I was going to say we just got done with our spring break. So um, we are back into it this week. Uh, we did a little bit of traveling and I actually was really ready to get back into the normal routine. <laughs> so uh, it's been a good couple of days. I have four kiddos. I have two in middle school and two in elementary school still. And so a lot of my like hobby time is spent driving people places. <laughs> um, I do like to listen to audiobooks uh, when I do that. So I'm really excited about hearing about all these audiobooks because I'm definitely going to grab some uh, from you guys and listen to them. I have a wonderful husband. Uh, I was born and raised in Oklahoma and I still live here. <clears throat> and he is a transplant. Uh, so when he's watching uh, March Madness, he is not cheering for any Oklahoma teams, which I don't even know if any Oklahoma teams are in it this year, because that's how much I really <laughs> do not. I'm not a huge sports person. Um, I have two fun dogs. Um, I love walking them in our neighborhood. We live in a, an older, really pretty neighborhood with lots of pretty landscaping, lots of birds. Um, one of my uh, stories that made it into a book this year was earlier this year, we live like a block away from the green belt and we had a skunk uh, come into our backyard and a uh, little bit after dawn. And the way I found out about it was that my dogs found out about it. Um, so that actually made it into <laughs> one of my books. Um, not super fun, but my readers, um, actually, I sent it out on my email list. We share a lot of fun stories on there. 
And my readers came back with a lot of similar stories and a lot of really great advice on what I could do to get rid of the smell. Um, I write historical cowboys. Uh, I do have some contemporary cowboys as well. Um, I was sitting here having to count up when Susie and Elena started mentioning how many books that they had. Um, I am currently working on my 66th book. Um, I have been publishing since 2011. And actually my first book baby made it out into the world the same month that my son was born. So it's always really easy for me to remember. Um, and I did a book signing way back then with my really big tummy. Um, it was very crazy. I don't really love looking at the pictures, but it's a fun memory. Um, my books, uh, most of them are in KU. Um, they are available uh, in audio books. Some of them you can get through your library on the Libby app and, and Hoopla. Uh, some of them are exclusive to Audible, um, but they are all available out there. Uh, I do have large print editions, um, and uh, I'm really excited to be here tonight and get to chat with all of you guys. So thank you for that, and turn it on to Miss Judy. But before it goes to Judy, I'll just say that I had a night where I was putting, like everybody was in bed but the teenagers, and I was like, guys, it's time to go to bed. And my border collie is like freaking out outside the door, so I open the door and she comes shooting in to my beautiful, expensive, white wool carved rug and puts her face down and just rubs it all the way across because she got hit in the face of the skunk. And I will tell you, you never forget that smell. It's not the same thing that you smell when you're, I mean, I was like, oh, we just threw the rug away. I was ready to throw the dog away. But anyway, yes, I think a lot of people have yeah. probably sadly had something like that and you don't forget it. Anyway. No, it's very memorable. <laughs> I've never been hit by a skunk yet, so hopefully that'll stay away from us. Um, so I am Judy Corey. I, um, I'm from Utah, Southern Utah, and I've lived here most of my life. I lived in um, central New York for like seven months and uh, long enough to inspire one of my book series to, to be there. So, you know, that was good, I guess. Um, but I have four kids. Um, it's kind of, you know, crazy time of life right now. I have one in high school, two in middle school and one in elementary. And so like Lacey, I drive my kids around a lot and uh, that's fun. So um, my daughter, two of my daughters, well, I only have two daughters, so I have two boys, two girls, um, and they're both in dance. And so I'm a dance mom a lot of the time as well. Just got back from a convention with my oldest daughter. And so that's just kind of, I write and I go to dance things and I drive kids and Sometimes I go on walk. Well, I try to go on walks all the time, but you know, it doesn't happen every day. Um, but I take my dogs. I'm kind of obsessed with my pug. Um, and he so obsessed that I put him in one of my books. So that was fun. And um, let's see, I've been writing since 2012, um, but I didn't publish until 2017. And since then I've had, well, I'm, I'm working on book number 20. It should be done by now, but it's not. Um, but it's supposed to come out in April, so we hope that it will be done because it's getting crunch time. Um, but yeah, it's gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna get done, Jenny. I just have to say, I my I was a highly competitive dance mom for like 14 years. Mm -hmm. I developed my entire editing system around dance competitions so that I could work at the dance competition. And yeah. so then that's still how I edit my books. And so yeah. you know, you do what you have to do. Yeah, I call them writing retreats, uh, but. <laughs> It's a lot of dance bombing too, and taking my daughter food and watching dancing. But and I actually I don't know if Judy knows this, but I had had an agent for almost five years and had never been able to get a trad deal. And mm -hmm. when I was trying to decide whether to go indie or just keep pursuing trad, banging my head against that wall, um, I met Elena at a conference. She knows that. But then shortly after that, I watched Judy and her writing gals podcasts at the time, and that was the first time I was like, oh. Well, maybe, maybe I can do it. It was the combination of meeting Elena and then watching the writing gals talk about how they had gone indie that made me say, okay, I'm going to take the plunge. So I'm, you know, a little behind her, but that's, she you're was a little behind, but you're also way ahead now. You have like how, 66, 60 something books. How many? 44, oh, only 44. Yeah. I'm just, really glad that, I'm just really glad that somebody supported my crazy so that she wasn't like, well, it's just that Elena girl. No, I met Elena people. and then I watched Judy's stuff and I was like, maybe I can do this. There's so other people. people. <laughs> the people on here that convinced me to do it. It's your yeah. fault. No, it's all amazing. So, um, so yeah, so I, let's see. So I write sweet young adult and also contemporary romance. I have, 
I think 14 that are young adult and then five that are adult, um, sports, romance, billionaires. Um, and my, I'm starting my, my next series will be all adult books. Um, so that'll be fun. I, I always feel a little funny saying my adult books, but they're all clean. <laughs> they're all sweet romances. Kisses the, <laughs> the, the, the kisses are slightly, you know, they're passionate a little bit, but that's as much as you get. Um, so yeah, and they're all in audio. Well, not all of them. I have all but three in audio and then they're all in paperback and ebook and they're all on all the wide platforms. So I think that's pretty much it about me. I like, you know, when I have time, I like to watch Netflix. Um, I, I'm also addicted to The Bachelor. They get me every single season, even though it's not always like worth it. But this season was good. So that worked out. Um, yeah, that's kind of me. Okay, I'm last. Um, I'm Emma. Hi, I live in Texas now. I grew up in Virginia, though. So I'm a transplant, which means a lot of times Texas stuff is real weird to me. And so I still am like, well, that's really interesting. And then I have to remember I've lived here for like 20 years. Um, I told is, Rob, somebody, is Rob a native Texan? Since like first grade. So that probably counts. I think yeah. we'll allow it. Yeah. Yeah. His dad was a pastor. So they like traveled. They were like all over the place. And then here. Um, I was but just I wondering if he was able to interpret for you. <laughs> well, yeah, mostly he can. Yeah, he's pretty Texan. And my kids are like so ridiculously Texan, which is, you know, it's fine. I love it. It's. I told somebody, though, that going to like the rodeo is sort of like going for people because like the way everybody dresses and coming from another state, I'm like, whoa, where everybody else thinks it's normal. So I live here. We've got five kids. Um, my dog, uh, we have a dog who's, I was laughing at Elena's big dog. Our dog, we have a great Dane. He's 150 pounds. Um, and he might burst through the doors in the middle of this. And hopefully if the Amazon package comes, it won't be now because he will, the front door is right there and he'll, you'll, well, I'll mute it, but he'll woof around. Um, I write uh, romantic comedies. And originally my Emma name, I did like just regular contemporary adult, but not that kind of adult, like Judy said, um, clean adult romance. Some had little faith elements in there, but now it's just straight romantic comedies, um, which is just really fun. And I think much better suited to my personality. I always felt like I was sort of like tamping down when I was trying to write just romance um, and putting myself in a little too tight of a box. So that's what I do for fun. Uh, I don't have time for that right now. <laughs> so it's mostly carting kids around. My oldest just turned, he'll be 16. So uh, he's been driving me lately. And I'm really proud of myself because when I was learning to drive, I just remember like after the second time I had to stop riding with my mother because she would just scream. And I was like, if you think I'm about to hit a tree, do you think it's going to help? that you're screaming, like just shrieking in the car. So I was like, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna be cool. <laughs> so like last night we're driving and we do it a lot at late at night cause there's just no time. And we're on this like 60 mile an hour road and he like around the corner and I'm like, now normally you might want to use the brakes a little harder while well, I'm like white knuckling like the side of the car. Um, so that's, is that fun? I don't know if that's considered a hobby, like surviving. No, it's horrible. That's, that's horrible. That's like my definition of horrible is teaching driving with your 15 year olds. Like, oh. Whew, I'm right. surviving. He's okay. Yeah, my, He's not I used to think that potty training was the worst thing you had to do as a parent. And then I had to teach my 16 year old to drive. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is so much worse. So my daughter was in the back of the car the first time we took my 16 year old out to drive. And she was literally texting my mom and saying, Eli's driving. It is not going well. Please come and save me. <laughs> I'm dying laughing. It's so harrowing. It's a little, it's a little scary. So I'm lucky to be here tonight. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now at the season of life, I used to do fun stuff. I used to play roller derby, which was amazing. Um, I really think that got me through like those early years of parenting where I just needed to do something that was not being like a mom for a few minutes every week. It was actually a couple hours a week, but um, but now it's just the writing and then the kids for now. Um, my husband and I, we just finished our spring break and we took our first trip alone in 14 years and we took a cruise. We didn't even get off the boat. People are like, where's it going? I'm like, I don't care. There's like, I'm sitting on a lounge chair. I'm telling people to bring, like I'm ordering drinks on the app and just laying there like a queen. Like, yes, bring me another, please. I'm just gonna lay here. It was great. 
Um, but yeah, that's about it. Most of my books, my romantic comedies are in audio. If they're not out yet, they're in production. Um, my rom-coms are in KU. Some of my backlist, um, like the regular romances are, are wide. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it for me. All right. So that means we are to our second question. Who's excited? Um, so I'm a little more, okay. Elena may not be frozen. Thank goodness. She, she might be frozen. If she is Susan, then we might be with you. Um, but, uh, the second question is the one you guys have all been waiting for, because this is where everyone's going to talk about the book that they gave away in February. And, um, and so this is the book that hopefully you downloaded and have for free. Um, even if it, you didn't, these are all still available. So, um, don't worry, you can still get them, but we're going to talk about the books that we gave away, um, and tell you a little bit about why you're going to want to read those. So Susan, why don't you, Elena, are you there? I'm here. I'm frozen. You're frozen. Okay. Well, I'm still here. I can I don't hear know you here. fine. So do you want to go ahead and talk about your book? Um, why don't you have Jan go first? Jan, don't you have to leave? Oh, that's a good idea. So we'll have Jan go first and then we'll circle back. And if Elena's unfrozen, we'll do her. And if not, we'll move to Susan. And I might, I might duck on the back. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, I've got to go pick up the granddaughter. <laughs> I was supposed to do it last night, but my car died. Well, anyway, hopefully it starts this time. But here we go. This is the Coral Cottage. This is the one that I hope you were able to download and read. If you haven't started it yet, there's a lot of fun in store for you. And the Coral Cottage takes place in Summer Beach. Uh, that started, uh, that's a spinoff. Uh, actually, I have six books in that series. Coral Memories is coming out in June, and that will wrap up the Coral Cottage series. Um, but it start, all started with this one. I think, Bridget, you mentioned the umbrellas. That started the Summer Beach series, and I just came out with book number 10 on that one, Seabreeze Gala. So that's been a really popular series, and we're just, we're really having so much fun with it. So uh, Coral Cottage is about Marina. She's 45 and starting over in life, has twins in college, and uh, someone over here in the comments said it's 45 old. And you know, it is according to a lot of New York editors. And you know, they want to see those 25 year olds. And, and but I think that we only get better with age. And, you know, to me, yes, 45 is young, 65 is young. I, you know, I think we we're the best we are whatever age we are if we decide to be and i love writing fabulous grandmothers so that's my jam i love family sagas and i've got a family saga in um in coral cottage it's marina and her two sisters and the grandmother and they're just having a blast so everything from uh summer stock theater to uh Oh, I love putting dogs in, in books, too. I've got a Labrador puppy that gets into all kinds of trouble, digging up gardens and so forth. And, and I just really have a lot of fun with it. Also, my download today, my free download, is for the Summer Beach Welcome Kit. And in that, you'll have excerpts from both the Coral Cottage and Summer Beach, uh, Sea Breeze Inn, and then also some other things. I've got family trees in there, so you know who's who. Uh, an island, or not the island, um, that's that's Crown Island, but a map of Summer Beach, so you can see where all of the houses and the little shops are. You can see where Java Beach is and Spirits and Vine and all the places that I love to throw in where everyone is going. So um, there's some downloadable bookmarks and uh, recipes. I love to include recipes as well. So lots of SoCal recipes in there. And um, that's it. Did I answer everything, Bridget, or did I leave something out? You got, I got it. it. I got it. Okay. On to the next. Who's up, Elaine? Bridget, you were totally muted. So you talked yeah, to I me. Didn't realize you. That. I was going to say, just tell your, you got everything, but tell your granddaughter that we appreciate her for sharing. Yes. Oh, yes. I will. I will. If I have to, uh, if I have to bug out, I'll just say goodbye. Yep, <laughs> but, that's great. That's great. Thank, thank you so you. much. I love You're being awesome. here. I always go real fast. My book in the clean romance crush was The Relation Trip. It's a standalone novel. It's the only standalone novel I have. All of my other books are part of series, but this is a standalone. It's a beach romance with opposites attract. 
Logan and Sloan are best friends. One of them lives in Pittsburgh. One of them lives somewhere else I can't think of right now. I think up by Lake Superior. And so they live in these really cold places and they take a midwinter trip every year. And they met on her non-honeymoon and they take a midwinter trip every year. And But he has had feelings for her for, her for a couple of years now. And he's determined that this year is the year he's going to tell her. They get to the resort. There's only one room, so they have to share. So it's friends to lovers, opposites attract, one bed, sit on the beach, one and done, read it, love it. That's the relationship. So if you've gotten it, I hope you read it. And yeah, if you like those tropes, that's what you'll get. So Susie, we're to you. Let's go ahead and tell us about your book. All right. Well, I don't have a cute cover, like an actual book, but here's my cover. I have a cute cover. I just don't have an actual book because it's digital, although you can get it in print. Um, and my book is called You Don't Have to Be a Star. It's actually a prequel to the Montana Fire series, which is this long series about hot firefighters. But this particular book, it takes place in Tennessee, and it's about an ex-Green Beret who has who's now turned a, into a, a forest ranger and a celebrity from, she's like an action hero from Hollywood. And when she gets in trouble in Hollywood, she has to go into hiding. And so she ends up in the Cherokee Forest in Tennessee under the watchful care of Luke, uh, Alexander and Luke is not super thrilled about having to protect her, but he's doing it as a favor to a buddy. And of course, he's got a past. And so we've got a little wounded hero going on. We got me, we got a little fish out of water because she's Hollywood, goes to Tennessee, you know. And but it's very, very fun. And really, of course, it's exactly what they both need. So there's a lot of cool healing, and uh, there's some other wonderful layers in there. So it's it's a fun story, and it's a story that will. Uh, peak, I think, people's interest in uh, Montana Fire. But if you're just interested in just a really fun story about two very opposite people who find love, then this is the story for you. I'm glad I downloaded these because it sounds great to me. <laughs> All right. It's my turn. And I realized after I stopped talking last time that I did none of the questions, uh, answered none of the questions that Bridget told me to. So I have like mid-60s number of books. Um, and um, they're almost all in audio. Uh, you can buy them from my store or, uh, you know, if you go to my website, you can figure that out. Um, and then my book, I also do not have a copy, but this it's called The Sugar Queen. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and it is the beginning of my Emerson Pass Contemporary series. I did something kind of goofy. I did um, Emerson Pass is a fictional town in Colorado. And it begins in 1910 with the Barnes family. And the contemporary picks up 100 years later with the descendants of the original characters. Um, See, this and, sounds right yeah. up my alley. This it's is really, like all the books that I do are a little yeah. different. I yeah. love it. Th that's me too. I'm like, my books are so weird and I can't stop writing weird books. Um, oh, thanks, Gloria. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, it's. Um, it's a uh, mountain town, Colorado, kind of a tourist destination by the time the contemporary opens. And the first book, The Sugar Queen, is about, it's a second chance high school sweethearts that were torn apart uh, for various reasons. And um, he's a big uh, football star and he shows back up in town, or hockey star, shows back up in town and they kind of have to work out some things, including a secret baby. So... <laughs> That's uh, that's the sugar queen, and um, I love the, I loved writing the you know the the family saga hundred years later, but it was very complicated, and so I have extensive family trees that are on my website, you know, to show you kind of who 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 went with what. So I think that was all. I, I feel I'm like the bad student. I can't remember what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> Anyway, oh, you did a great segue because you caught up with the answers that we missed on round one and then you tied it into your book for round two. So that was great. Beautifully done. Thank you. Thanks, Tess. So um, my free download was um, Summer Island Book Club and I just sold out last weekend at a book signing. So I didn't have a chance to get any more coffee. So sorry about that. But there's a sign on that side behind me, too. Um, this is from the Friendship Beach series. It's a later in life series. And what happened was I was turning 50 and I was like, I miss all my, my friends. Like now that I've got an empty nest, we're all getting back together. And those friendships were 
reignited and we just became so close again. And I wanted to write um, a series for all those friends. So in the first book, Summer Island Book Club, she had lost her husband and her daughter decided to get her out of her funk. She was going to invite her old high school best friends who she hadn't seen in years because they had a falling out over something that had happened. And they all show up and they make this 50th birthday party, not only um, a, an event to remember, but they also set her up with the new guy in town, this sailor who was, um, who was new to the area. So it's a little fish out of water, enemies to lovers. And um, they end up together because I had a friend who had a mischievous pet ferret. And so he's in the book <laughs> and they have all these little tunnels that run around the house and out in there. And he gets away and steals an engine part while the guy's working on the uh, sailboat. Yes, there are engines on a sailboat. Um, <laughs> and so that was their meet cute when she has to return this engine part. So I really enjoyed it. Um, like I think it was uh, Susan. Somebody said they put recipes in their books and, and all of that. And so I have those and reader guides. And and it's been a really fun series because a lot of book clubs have picked it up because they're enjoying that later in life series. Um, and I thought there was one more question, but like Tess, I'm the bad student apparently. But um, yeah, so that was my, my free one. And there's four books in that series. Yep, for this one, there's just one, unless uh, Tess is catching up on round one. Um, but so I have almost never go in the middle. This is weird for me, but my book is um, called The Bequest, and mine is Two Widows. And um, the tagline is pretty simple. It's two widows, six kiddos, um, and a cattle ranch they stand to inherit um, if they can work it for a year. And so I got, I, I pull my ideas shamelessly from real life. So one of the widows is a lawyer in the Houston area <laughs> with four kids. So I'm a lawyer in the Houston area with five kids. And then I made an influencer in your with two kids. So you have a total of six and I have five. I literally modeled five of the six kids on mine because when I started writing, I wanted to write a book that had a big family, lots of kids instead of just one token child. And I realized pretty quickly that was a lot of people to keep straight. So I was like, I am going to shamelessly use my own children to remember the personalities. <laughs> so I do get comments a lot saying, the kids feel so real. I'm like, do they? <laughs> they should feel real. <laughs> anyway, um, and so then they're like, who's the sixth? I'm like, the bratty one. <laughs> the first one is my niece. <laughs> Sorry, but my in-laws don't read my books. So I can say that on here. <laughs> Oh man, now you know Bridget's kind of a jerk. Anyway, um, so that's my uh, Birch Creek Ranch series. And that one, I told uh, you when Tess was talking that I like to do weird things. So that series has seven books in it. Um, I'm writing book eight, which is the final book right now. And it is, it, uh, there are always a lot of things going on. This is women's fiction that has romance in it. And so there's, you know, side plots and subplots and all kinds of stuff and lots of happily ever afters that happen over time. But um, the one that I'm working on right now is for everyone's favorite grandma, Jan. So I am writing a romance for an octogenarian. <laughs> has been, when I told everyone I was going to do it, I think everybody was like, what? And I'm like, it's going to be great. It's a second chance romance. It was her high school flame gone wrong. And it has been really fun to write with all these flashbacks. And then the stuff that's going on right now, um, for someone to write a love story for someone who's 80, it's actually been a hoot because she can say whatever she wants. So anyway, that is the Birch Creek Ranch series and I will pass it off to you, April. Okay, so I think I might've forgotten to tell you guys what I write. So I write cowboy romance, sweet cowboy romance. And so the book you got in the journal, <laughs> that just didn't sound right. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, the book you got in the download that was mine is Impressing Her Billionaire Cowboy Boss. So if the title doesn't give it away, um, it's an office romance and um, she falls for her boss. So one of the things that I loved about this book was writing a strong heroine. So she's gotten her master's in, you know, being a rancher. She grew up on a ranch. I guess there's not really a master's degree in being a rancher, but I think you know what I mean. And um, 
so she grew up in a man's world. She's comfortable in a man's world. So when she gets a job for the biggest ranch in Texas in their corporate office, she thinks like her life has been worth it. Like all the sacrifices she's made have paid off. And then she goes into the boardroom because she's she doesn't have a big job yet. So she's delivering paperwork to someone in the middle of a meeting. And somebody says something that she disagrees with because she grew up on a ranch and she disagrees. So she walks to the whiteboard and starts writing out why this man was wrong. It's a room full of men. And then she realizes what she's done and she just puts the paperwork down and walks out and thinks that she's lost her job and everything. And obviously she does that doesn't happen. She ends up like working on a project with her hunky cowboy boss. And um, she falls in love with everything about him because he's a family guy, loves his mom. And, you know, he's conflicted about what his future should be. And then of course she's his future. So it was just, um, there's some fun kissing scenes, which is just my favorite to write. And um, I don't know, I just love this series, but this first book was really, really fun to write. And after that, I wrote a second generation series, which is all of the main characters in this series, their kids are getting married and giving them trouble and they're facing all kinds of stuff that they didn't expect to face. And that one was almost as fun, as much fun as the first one was to write. So I hope you enjoy it because I loved writing it. And so let's see if that make, goes to Lacey. That goes to me. I'm going to try and go fast since we maybe are running out of time. Um, my book from the giveaway is Roping the Wrangler. Um, if you downloaded it or you go out and look for it, the cover, it, this is an older cover. Um, this is part of my Wind River Hearts series. Uh, it's historical cowboys. And they got a makeover back in December. Uh, they got all new covers. Um, I really, really like them. They're really fun. It has a spinster school marm. It has the charming horse wrangler slash horse trainer. It's opposites attract. It has a found family element. It, it takes place at Christmas. The heroine has a uh, sworn off romance. Um, and of course, that doesn't pan out super well for her. Uh, Wind River Hearts has been one of my absolute favorite series to write. Almost all the books are connected um, with a big family. Uh, and I'm really excited this fall. There's going to be a spinoff series that I'm writing with Sunrise Publishing. And the first book in that series comes out in September. It's a mail order bride book. And I'm really, really excited about it. So watch for the pre-order for that. We should have the pre-order like within the next month or so. And I'm so excited about it. Hey, um, so I'm I'm terrible at describing my book. So we'll see how this goes. I'm used to like doing like 15 second TikToks. So we'll see. So this is my book, Curve of Fall Star X, that was um, part of the, the free giveaway thing. And it is a, if you can't guess, it's a second chance romance. Um, and the guy is a quarterback for a fictional team called the Denver Dragons. Um, anyway, so they are divorced at the beginning of the book because Vincent made a really bad choice. Um, and yeah, they have a big obstacle to, to overcome um, in this one. So if you're okay with redemption stories, then you're going to like this one. Um, but they are both set to attend the same wedding for their friend and, um, she's going to be the bridesmaid. He's the best man because, um, they're friends with the couple. And so they're both going to be there together. And when Emerson hears that her ex is going to be possibly showing up with a date, she decides that she doesn't want to look like she's single and, you know, the only one pining after their ex a little bit still. And so she decides to sign up for online dating. Um, to try to hopefully get a date in time for the wedding and make Vincent jealous. Um, but then we, it's dual point of view. So then later we find out that Vincent is hanging out with his friend and his friend is um, going through his dating app and, oh, there pops up Emerson. And Vincent's is like, what? She's on a dating website? Because he doesn't actually have a date to the wedding. Um, and so, but then his son he sees mommy on the screen and he wants to see another photo of her. And so he swipes across, he swipes right. And so he matches um, 
his dad's best friend with his mom on accident and she doesn't know that it's his friend because he um his he's also a football star and so he kind of is a little bit discreet in his photo he's like got a hat and he's holding a big fish and whatever so then they kind of start chatting but vincent is like well i maybe this is a sign maybe this is a way for me to kind of get back in her good graces and maybe just kind of clear the air and so he like starts chatting as his friend and this you know it gets kind of messy but anyway so they you know they had great have great conversations and then um later you know they spend a lot of time together at the wedding and i don't know maybe some sparks are still there and that's just kind of kind of how it goes um uh, it's one of my most emotional stories because they do have some difficult things to overcome and i throw some um wrenches in the in there as well but um i really loved it it's one of my favorite ones that i've written um so yeah that's kind of it and i also um are we talking about the ones that I have another book that I was doing? Like, okay, no. Okay, so that that's my book. <laughs> we'll circle back around and do that in just a second. Okay, okay. Okay, my book in the set or in the download was um, The Billionaire Love Match, which um, I actually started writing because I was writing these beach books and they were selling okay. Like that, that was like the first series I wrote. And I just expected to like, sell a million books right away. And I was really irritated because billionaires were super hot. And I was like, I don't understand this at all. And so I started writing a book to make fun of billionaires and then like fell in love with the billionaire and the book itself. And so that was my like intended to be like a parody satire. And then I was like, actually, and then of course I published it and sold like four times as many as my beach books. And I was like, stupid billionaire. So I wrote a whole series of them. Um, but I feel like that book really sort of I like sharing that one because even though it's not a rom-com, it has a lot of funny moments in it. And I feel like I can look back and be like, this was my first instinct before I kind of was like, I've got to tone it down. I got to tone, you know, the humor down a little bit. But the very first chapter has a kiss, which I didn't really read a lot of romance at the time. So I didn't know there were like rules. <laughs> so there's a kiss in the men's bathroom in the very first chapter. It's still a clean book, but Later, I found out like everybody, like like a lot of times you like leave the kiss for later. And I was like, whoops, like I didn't, didn't know, you know, but I love that it's kind of unexpected, some of those things. And it's based loosely off The Bachelor, which some people like and some don't. Um, I enjoy doing that. I love, I sort of hate watch The Bachelor. Um, and I have a friend who does a podcast called I Hate Green Beans, which is all about The Bachelor. It's really funny. I often listen, even though I don't watch the show. So it was, I feel like that was like this book of like making fun of stuff that then turned into like me really loving it. Um, and so, you know, loving like the romance genre, loving, I loved all these billionaires, even though I feel like my billionaires were very unbillionary. Like there weren't a lot of like the big giant billionaire moments that just kind of like had the word on the cover. Cause I was still learning about tropes and what that meant. Cause again, like baby romance author, baby romance reader at the time. So it's fun. I feel like it's like my, like, oh, I can see the seeds of who I was becoming as an author, but it's still a fun read. So um, if you like kisses in the men's bathroom, everybody's hankering for that. Um, don't let that deter you. I really think it was a cute kiss, um, despite the urinals in the background. So. All right, well, we are on our final round. This is our bonus round. Um, Elena's still laughing about the men's bathroom. So I'm going to give her a second to compose herself. When we're Just done with our bonus round, then Elena's going to give our giveaway people their stuff. So I'm going to let her go. The urinals in the background. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, Emma knows how to set the atmosphere. So I'm picture going to um, have Elena start and we're going to go around. Jan kind of jumped the gun because she had to leave. So we're all going to just do 30 seconds on because we're already over time. We're just going to give you 30 seconds on maybe how you could join our newsletter or where you might be able to grab one of our books free or something like that. So we're going to give you all a little bonus um, info right here. And then after that, Elena's going to award the giveaways and we'll be all done for the night. That is true. I just remembered I got to go grab that other link. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm on camera. Um, if you join my book club, which is on my website, feelgoodfictionbooks.com, then I give you three free books, one from each of my names. So you can decide which name you like best. Jesse Newton, Liz Isaacson, or Elena Johnson. And that's at feelgoodfictionbooks.com backslash book dash club. That's where you get it. Susie, you're up. 
I'm sorry, I was talking and then I forgot to unmute. Uh, so uh, you can get a free book at SusanMayWarren.com. You have to hit shop or the store and go there and there's a free book down at the bottom. It's, uh, it's called The Homecoming of Logan Thorne and he's a common character that permeates all the books. So you get to, to meet him and then it kind of hooks you into all the different kinds of books that you can read in the different series that I have. So head over to SusanMayWarren.com. Okay, same with me. It's uh, testrights.com, and I have actually a matchmaker series. It's um, the Mystery Matchmaker of Ella Point, and the uh, prequel is Permafree. It sets up the murder mystery and this group of five kids who all need a, uh, a wife. <laughs> well, one of them's a, a, a daughter, so she needs a husband. Um, and it's the murder mystery kind of follows through the first three books, but it'll it sets it up. Um, it's called Making of a Matchmaker. And if you go to testrights.com, it will pops right up. You just sign up for my newsletter and then you're all good. So you can go to sierranight.com backslash newsletter to sign up to get two free books from my Sweetwater County series, Winter and Spring, or you can click on shop and you can get Valentine's in Sweetwater County for free. Also tomorrow, if you visit my website, you'll get some bonus material from my brand new release today, Charming the, Gr the Grumpy Cowboy. April, you're muted. April, you're muted, hon. I thought I hit the mute button, sorry. <laughs> um, I mentioned that I have a second generation uh, Billionaire Ranchers series and my freebie is kind of the prequel that kicks that off. And it's the hero and heroine from Impressing Her Billionaire Cowboy Boss. It's their daughter who, um, it's her love story. So um, oddly enough, that the name of that book is Loving His Boss. So. He, I guess she follows her in her father's foot, in her parents' footsteps and falls in love with somebody she works with. So you can get that at the link there that uh, Elena's put in, or you can go to aprilmurdoch.com. That's such a cute idea that the um, the relative had a similar intro. I love that. Okay. It wasn't planned that way, believe me. It just happened. <laughs> <clears throat> Sometimes it just works like that. Uh, Y'all can find a free book from me at LaceyWilliams.net. Uh, if you just scroll down a little bit on the page, my new release is at the top, but scroll down just a little bit and you'll see that you click um, and grab that free book. Um, it's a really fun one. It's an outdoorsy one um, up in the mountains, uh, stranded together in a snowstorm uh, kind of one. Opposites attract. Um, Hero absolutely does not want a love interest and too bad for him. So it's really fun. Thank you. Um, I think if you go to my website, you get a couple of free books. I don't remember which ones they are because I'm not organized, but I think I gave Elena, um, maybe we'll see, but I think I gave her a link for the bequest. There you go. She's nodding for the bequest, which is the book I gave away free here. It's not free anywhere else, but you can grab it free there. Um, but the other thing is that the bequest is actually free for the first time ever in audio right now and has been for about two weeks. Um, on Google Play, Chirp, and Apple. So you can grab it from any of those places for free in audio if you are an audiobook listener. Okay, and for me, I have um, I have two novellas that I give away for free for anyone who joins my newsletter at judycorey.com. Um, I have one that's a young adult one, Enemies to Lovers, um, where the, the girl gets stuck staying at her best friend's house for the week and her you know, old, annoying older brother is there and they've never gotten along, but he's suddenly hot. So, um, and then the other one is my, and I just um, have to say, Judy is the queen of like brother's best friend. Um, like the forbidden YA romance. If I want a forbidden YA romance, I'm, re I'm picking up one of Judy's. Like yeah. if, you, if you like those that you should go get that right now. Thank you. Forbidden romance is my all time favorite trope. I just, anything forbidden, love it. Um, and so, and then my other one is uh, stolen kisses from a rock star. That also, um, I think Elena has a link for that one, but you can also get that at my website. Um, and that is like a childhood best friend's second, well, not really second chance. He's always loved her, um, and but she has a crush on this masked rock star, and um, she gets a a ticket 
backstage VIP pass that her friends helped her get. And she ends up kissing him, but he kind of maybe seems familiar. So is it in um, a main restroom or no? It didn't no. happen in the restroom. It's back backstage in just his, you know, waiting area, whatever. So, but so disappointing. So I know. disappointing. I'm, Next, I'm gonna add that. This to missed book. opportunity, Judy. It's a missed opportunity, really. Next book, and he's a billionaire, so it'll just be kind of the same. It'll be perfect. It'll be perfect. It'll be perfect. <laughs> and I'll be. It'll be number one right there. Just add that in. So anyway, that's that's my mine. Okay, and mine should be at emmastclair.com slash ante, A-N-T-E, like upping the ante, which is a poker term. And it's a novella from my Sheet Cake Texas series. Um, this one is a grumpy boss who's a football player or who's just retired and his assistant quits in the first chapter and he realizes he can't live without her in more ways than one. So we have a little road trip in Texas. Um, there are no kisses in men's bathrooms in that one. So, um, you know. But I did my most recent book. I think there's like four bathroom kisses. So I think there's like a thing. <laughs> I, have, I have a thing. I don't know. That's my trope. That's the new. That it's, it's, the new funny. it's just funny. It's the new only one bed. It's going to be in the bathroom kissing everybody. All the books next year. Elena has an outdoor shower kiss or something, I think. Oh, I weird. do. In the relationship, that and I write some steamy kisses myself. I call I say that I write dirty kissing books because I write a lot of kissing because I like it. And um, and oh, yeah. is a that, lucky that, man. <laughs> that shower kiss, I'm like, you know what? I am writing a shower kiss. I think you can't do that in clean romance. But guess what? You can when the shower is outdoors and they have swimsuits on. <laughs> So it worked out really good for me. There were no urinals, though. I don't think I've ever used the word urinal in a book ever. Hey, look, if you have ever had a teenage son, you know that the entire outdoors is a urinal. So you're so, like right there. <laughs> so, yeah. Did we get everybody? Okay. It is time for us to uh, do our scavenger hunt. I don't want you to forget about the scavenger hunt, except that's not it right there. What, what did I just click on? Elena has um, forgotten about the scavenger hunt. <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a scavenger hunt. We have three of them, you guys. And why can't I? I literally just made the link. And now well, it's not I will gonna... just say for Elena, she manages a billion links for all of these things. I have been uh, so impressed. Three different live streams. She's been effortlessly and flawlessly without breaking a sweat dropping link. So I would just say, yeah, I'm going to clap for just a second for Elena because she has done a beautiful job. You would have seen a lot of fumble bumbling if I had been tasked to do that. Okay, I'm gonna. I have the scavenger hunt link. I made it in Genius Links while you guys were talking, and you guys are fast, like lightning fast. And then I'm like trying to like go get the uh, like um, the winners and all the stuff, and, and now I can't find that link. It's not saying it's in there. I made. Well, then look, in. I'm gonna buy you just a second by saying we usually say this at the end, but I just want to say right now. All nine of us and Jan too, we are so grateful for our readers. And I know we say this every time, but we all think we have the best job in the world because let's face it, we kind of do. We get to make up people. We get to make up places. We get to come up with anything we want. And a lot of us pull on funny and interesting parts of our lives like Susan was talking about. And we write about those. And this is our job. We get to connect with other people that love to read. We can only do this because of you guys. So we really, from the bottom of our hearts, appreciate you. And we're so happy you were able to tune in with us. And we're really excited to give you guys some giveaway prizes and lots of amazing stories and hopefully lots of hours of entertainment. Definitely, for sure. I totally agree Not with enough that. bothering, I, Elena? <laughs> I, I realize now what I did wrong is I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't hit save. And so I thought that I had it and, and then I didn't actually have it. But I'm working on it and I'll get it up for you guys if I can figure out how to get off that second part that I, I pasted it in twice because, you know, I have fat fingers. I totally have man hands. I'm one of those people. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a link for the scavenger hunt. So essentially we split the scavenger hunts into three groups, one for each group of authors um, so that you didn't have to read 25 of them to enter once. And you really don't even have to read all the books. I didn't make the questions mandatory. And so you can go ahead and, um, just answer one if you want. And of course now my internet's not working. So let's see how this is going to go. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and put up the winners that I chose and maybe I'll come back to this and see if genius links is going to, 
collaborate with me on this. It's like really not having a good time. Um, so I chose three winners and these people, I had some people who had a hard time getting um, the email to me last week. So it's just going to be my first name and last name at Gmail. You're going to email me and say, I'm one of the winners for the gift card tonight in our thing. It's Elena Johnson at gmail.com. The trickiest part is that my first name, it's E-L-A-N-A. Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N at gmail.com. And our first winner is Bonita French. So thank you for all of your amazing comments. Every, I mean, lots of comments. It's not like she was the only one commenting. She's just one that I picked from the winners. Trudy, Piano Cat Lady. I don't know what that name is, but that sounds exciting. So this is the comment that won. You're going to email me at elenajohnson at gmail.com, and I will take care of that gift card for you. And our last one is Renee Mursky. So I don't know, but she likes the sound of that. Maybe all of our books because we're that awesome. So she's going to make sure that we get all of our books. This is still not up. Um, let's see if I can paste it again. Hey, while you're uh, doing that, I think it'd be fun if Susan can tell us. She was just complaining that she's not in her lovely, this is before we got started. So you guys didn't yeah. get to hear the story of why she's not in her office. Susan, why don't you tell everybody? Yeah. Okay. So I have, I have two houses, which is, I'm very blessed. And I have a Minnesota house and a Florida house and our Florida house is a really cute little house, but I have to share my office with my husband and my husband is he he doesn't realize it but when he talks he talks really loudly like he's got his earphones on and he's got his bows on and he's like shouting and so he's like super loud and so i actually went back there it's like you have to whisper and he's like yes 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 and he's like anyway so yeah so now i'm in my main my main my main room here but i did want to say that i really loved hearing everybody's words like the stories and i realized every we have so many things in common the whole you know i think we could have like a, a game where we're like okay we could like what hooks up with her like you know it was really fun to hear everybody's stories for me that was really a highlight to meet all these other authors because i don't know about you guys but i feel like my world is often very small i sit here and, and i type all day in my tiny little recliner and sometimes it's very small so having events like this is really fun for authors because we get to meet our readers and you know in a world where life is very busy it's hard to meet readers so we do really appreciate all you readers showing up for us tonight and just hanging out with us it's really really fun to see you and to see your comments and and then yes it's fun to see all you you cool authors we are definitely gonna have to get together on that boat drink some wine have some fun and i'm gonna take you all scuba diving that's right. I got it, you guys. I did it. I, I Genius Link wouldn't take a Google Form link. I just kept hitting save and it kept telling me no. And I was like, you know what? I'm going somewhere else. So the scavenger, it says hunt two because Elena typed it wrong. This is actually hunt three. But you know what? We're going with it because that was 10 minutes of me trying to make a link that I can't get back in my life. Okay. So go to smarturl.it backslash hunt two for hunt three. And I feel like this is a rom-com moment, so we're going to just run with it. Um, and as everyone has said, we really appreciate everyone being here. Thank you for, to our winners. Thank you to our authors. And that's it. I'm going to hit end stream, and we are going to, like, you know, wave ourselves out.